Hi, I'm Alice. I'm a music theorist. A what? We're like the scientist of music. I'm so bored already. Can I go? <sighs> okay, no more dog in this video, guys. I've both studied and taught music theory at various universities, and over the years, one thing that continues to surprise me is how many musicians, no matter college seniors or master students or professional musicians, can identify intervals quickly and correctly. Whoa, whoa, watch that big interval over there, you know, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, I'm not sure what that is. That's, uh, that's, uh, the augmented fifth. No, that's a tritone. No, no, it's an octave. <sighs> As you can imagine, that's not good. So I've decided to make this video. No matter if you're a student trying to pass a test or a teacher looking for resources or a parent trying to homeschool your kids or um, just a self-taught musician trying to learn, I hope this video could help you. Um, I'm also attaching a few PDFs in the description. Feel free to download them and use them. So, there are really only eight different sizes of simple intervals for you to identify. The unison, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the octave. Forget about the big ones for now, the ninth, the tenth, those are called compound intervals. Right now, we're just working on simple intervals, meaning intervals within an octave. In fact, you don't even ha really have to learn how to identify all eight of these because, look, everyone knows what an unison is. If the two notes are the same note, that's a unison. You also don't really have to learn how to identify an octave because, look, a C, a C. If the two notes have the same letter name, that's an octave. So I'm just gonna take out these two easy ones. Okay, let's not waste time on this. And that leaves us with six different sizes to identify. The strategy that I am proposing for you guys is to divide these guys into three different categories. The second and the third are small intervals. The fourth and the fifth are medium intervals and the sixth and the seventh are large intervals. You're probably thinking, yeah, duh, thanks. No, I promise this will help you later. Let's quickly review the fundamentals of how intervals work. It takes two words to describe one interval, like this, major third, perfect fourth. The first of those two words is the quality. So you pick one out of these five words, major, minor, perfect, diminished, or augmented. The second of those words is the size. So you pick one out of these numbers, all right? Great, now let's move on to the steps of how to identify intervals quickly. Step one, get the size first. A lot of musicians would think, hmm, major third the word representing the quality comes first so i should probably also figure out the quality first no 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 please don't do that ignore all the accidentals at first don't let these guys scare you simply count your note heads or your letter names and figure out the size like this f g a that's a third what kind of third we don't care right now G, A, B, C, D. That's a fifth. What kind of fifth? Worry about that later. And this one, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. This is a seventh. Leave it at that. If you're a student, this should at least get you half credit on a test. Please don't tell my boss I said that. Step two, deal with different sized intervals differently. Earlier, we divided the intervals into three different categories, small, medium, and large. This is where that comes in handy because we'll be dealing with each category using different techniques. If the interval is small, we'll be counting half steps. If the interval is medium sized, we'll be using a technique called all is perfect except BF. 
and if the interval is large, we'll be doing inversions. Now let me explain that in details. For seconds and thirds, it's actually much faster to just count how many half steps there are in between the two notes. Don't bother with the whole key thing, pretending that you're in the key of the bottom note. Do this. For seconds, if there's only one half step, it's a minor second. If there are two half steps or one whole step, it's a major second. For thirds, if there are three half steps, it's a minor third. And if there are four half steps or two whole steps, it's a major third. If anything abnormal happens, for example, you got a second that's even bigger than this one. You have more than two half steps. Something augmented is going on. For thirds, if you have a third that's got fewer than three half steps, go with diminished. Let's give it a try. This is obviously a second, and E to an F is one half step, making this a minor second. This is obviously another second. A B flat to a C is two half steps, or one whole step, making this a major second. This is a third. A D to an F is three half steps, making this a minor third. This is the funky one. A G sharp to a B flat. Mm, don't let the accidental scare you. Just figure out the size first. Huh, that's a third. What kind of third? Well, a G sharp to a B flat is only two half steps or one whole step away. That's even smaller than this one. What's smaller than the minor interval? Diminished. So this is a diminished third. Intervals like this is the reason why you should always figure out the size first. A lot of students will come up with an answer such as the major second because they didn't work on the size first and that's wrong. If the interval is medium sized, meaning that if you have a fourth or a fifth, then we follow a rule called all is perfect except for B, F. This means that on the piano white keys, all fourth and fifth are perfect unless you have a B and an F. Let's try it out. A G going to a C. Don't even think about it. It's not a B and an F. It's perfect. A and D. Perfect. B to E. Ooh, we do have a B here, but we don't have an F. You need both of these notes to show up at the same time to trump the perfect rule. So, perfect. C to F. Perfect. D to G. Perfect. E to A. Perfect. F to B, there it is, our only exception. This is an augmented fourth. G to C, perfect again. For fifth, it's the same thing. All white key fifth are perfect unless you have a B and an F. Let's try it out. A C to a G, perfect. D to A, perfect. E to B, perfect. F to C, perfect. G to D, perfect. A to E, perfect. You don't even have to think about these. Don't bother counting up the key of E major or G major. Just, they're not a B and an F. They're a fifth. They're perfect. This one is our only exception. Again, a B to an F is a diminished fifth. This rule is a game changer, guys. This makes it so much easier. Let's do some exercises together. One, two, three, Four. This is a fourth. Is it a B and an F? No, it's not. So this is a perfect fourth. One, two, three, four, five. This is a fifth. Is it a B and an F? Yes, it is. So this is a diminished fifth. An E flat go into an A flat. When the two notes in the same interval have the same accidentals, you could just Cancel them out like this. It will not affect the quality of your interval. So we have a fourth. Are these two notes an F and a B? No, they're not. So this is a perfect fourth. Perfect. An F to a B flat. This is the funky one. Ignore the accidental for now. We have an F going up to a B. As we said earlier, this is an augmented fourth. 
without the accidental. Now, let's add this flat back in. We have an augmented fourth, and now we are lowering the top note, meaning that we're making that augmented fourth smaller. What's one half step smaller than an augmented fourth? A perfect fourth. This is a perfect fourth. These ones are harder. A B flat going up to an F sharp. Again, ignore the accidentals for now. We have a fifth. We have a B going up to an F. So, without any accidentals, this interval is a diminished fifth. And now, when you raise the top of a diminished fifth, you're making that a perfect fifth. When you lower the bottom, you're making that interval even bigger. So, this is an augmented fifth. G sharp going up to a C. Forget about the accidental for now. We have a G going up to a C. That's a perfect fourth. And now, by raising that bottom note, we're making the perfect fourth smaller. What's one half step smaller than a perfect fourth? This is a diminished fourth. A D sharp going up to an A. Forget about the accidental for now. D going up to an A, that's a perfect fifth. And now, by raising that bottom note, we're making the perfect fifth smaller. What's one half step smaller than perfect? This is a diminished fifth. And this one, A flat going up to an E flat. Same thing. Cancel out the accidentals when they're the same, and we have an A going up to an E. This is a fifth, a perfect one. If the interval is large, meaning that it's a sixth or seventh, do inversions first. What does it mean to invert an interval? Well, it's really simple. Just take the bottom note and raise it by however many octaves you need until it becomes the top note. In this case, one octave is enough. All of these guys are inversions. As you can see, EF becomes FE, FB becomes BF, and EA becomes AE. There's a point in doing all of this. You see, intervals and their inversions will have opposite qualities, meaning that when you take a minor interval and you invert it, it becomes major. Augmented will become diminished, and perfect will stay perfect. That's why they're perfect. You can't mess with them. What's even better is that the two numbers, the two sizes, will always add up to nine. I repeat, the sum of the two sizes will be nine. That's our magic number. See, two plus seven is nine. Four plus five is nine. This rule here is really, really helpful. Now, let's try some exercises together. We have here two pretty large intervals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, the traditional way to figure out these two intervals is to pretend that you're in the key of the bottom note. So pretend that you're in D flat major and count up. See if the C is in your key or not. In this case, you have to pretend that you're in the key of G sharp major and count up. See if E is in your key or not. Not the easiest thing in the world. So let's try inversions instead. After inverting, D flat to C becomes C to D flat. G sharp to E becomes E to G sharp. Which ones would you rather figure out? The small ones or the big ones? So C to D flat is a second. What kind of second? Well, these guys are one half step away, making this a minor second. E to G sharp is a third. What kind of third? Well, these guys are four half steps away or two whole steps away, making this a major third. Now that we have the smaller guys figured out, let's work on the big ones. Now, we know that this interval here is the inversion of minor second. So, the quality must be the opposite of minor, which is major. The size, the number you're supposed to fill in here, 
must be the difference between 9 and 2, which is 7. So, this is a major 7th right here. And now the last one. We know that this big interval is the inversion of major 3rd. That means that the quality must be minor, which is the opposite of this. And the size must be 9 minus 3, which is 6. This interval here is a minor 6. That's it, guys. That's the end. Thank you for not falling asleep like brownie throughout this video. Now, if you look at the description, I'm attaching three PDFs. The first one is a flowchart. So it's basically a summary of the step-by-step -step guide that I've provided in this video. And the other two is um, a quiz and then the answer sheet. Feel free to take them and quiz yourself to make sure that you've actually got this. Okay? Well, good luck. Bye-bye.